here and as you can see Moki doesn't want to be seen yo what's up you guys it's Skylar here back again with another video and today I'm gonna do my first ever Q&A for my YouTube channel and I asked these questions told people to give me questions on Instagram my Instagram which is right here follow me if you're not helps out so much and my Facebook as well which is right here as well so yeah man let's just jump into it we got about 14 questions and yeah we're gonna get deep no I'm just kidding let's just get into it all right so the first question I got is from Adderigo I think I said that right from Instagram and it's how do you make money so as of right now um, it's been through shows been through festivals and a lot of it has been from your guys' generous tips and donations from when I go live and stuff. And uh, yeah, man, it really helps out so much. And it goes to feeling the journey to the to the musical medicine and also helping me with food and gas. So I'm very, very appreciative of it. But um, after these two uh, big festivals that I'm playing in October, by the way, you should definitely try to make it out if you can. Uh, one is uh, the Pyro uh, music and Arts Festival Fall Pyro in Ohio, which is October 15th, and then the weekend after that in um, Lima, Ohio, is the One Lima Festival, and that one's going to be, both of those are going to be a beautiful time, so if you're in the area, you should definitely try to make it out, but as I was saying, um, so yeah, after those festivals, I'm, it's pretty just going to, I'm just going to be chilling, I'm just going to be working on some stuff here, working on myself a lot, and uh, yeah, just getting another daytime job to save up and do it all over again. So, all right. Second question is from uh, the homie Bell, and she asks, "When did you know music was your path, and what inspires you the most when writing songs?" So, um, I've been doing music pretty much my whole life um, by singing. At least I. I would always sing and in sixth grade, uh, shout out to the Flint Hill homies, <laughs> I won uh, my sixth grade talent show by singing You Smile by Justin Bieber. Yeah, it was cool. And um, I didn't really start taking it seriously though until right before I got out of high school, I started picking up the guitar and I learned a song every day uh, for 2018 and that really pushed me to uh, really get into guitar more and producing and stuff and so that's when I really started to take it. A lot more serious and you know that's when I feel like God was tugging on my heart and saying hey man like you can do this this is what I want you to do I want you to spread my love my light through song and so I've been trying to follow that ever since and what inspires me what inspires me is just what I'm feeling man and um, what's going on in, in my life and in my homies life like if my homies struggling with something or anything I, I like to I like to try to put myself in people's positions to kind of get the different sides and uh, reactions. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't, but uh, mainly my emotions and it helps me get it out on paper to write them into songs and also um, I love to help people and I love to help my homies out and I try to do that in song as well. So yeah. So the third one is from the homie Dylan Hyde. She asks, what is your favorite part of the music writing producing process? Plus, do you have any tips? Yeah, man, uh, my, I guess my favorite would definitely, the favorite, my favorite part would definitely be the, the writing and the creating. Um, I guess that's part of the all in all creating process. The, one of the best thing is when I'm just randomly playing in uh, Brianna, she, you can ask her, this happens all the time. I'll just be randomly playing my guitar. I try to play at least a couple hours every day and I'll strum a little note or a melody and I'll be like, that's gonna be a song one day. And that usually happens twice a day. So I have about over 60 songs in the vault right now just to, to put away and whenever I feel to, to, that they need to be on an album or to come out, I'll usually go back to them. But that's pretty much the funnest part is getting the melody and then explaining my feelings and what I'm feeling. Uh, into the song so and for tips uh, generally for people who try to write or who are trying to get into songwriting and producing their own music I always uh, say just be vulnerable because I know some people are in their comfort zones it's not in their comfort zone to, to be vulnerable and to put themselves out there like that but what I have found is when people do that and it's, when I did it that that's when I learned the most about myself and realized that there are p beautiful good 
godly people out there that want to listen and that want to support you and that want to help you. And I just had a negative view on like, man, these are my problems. I don't want to put them on anybody else. And um, I feel like a lot of people feel that way. But in reality, you know, we're all human. We all go through the, they might not be the same things, but we all feel pain. We all go through hard times. And I feel like we were put here to help and lift people up, man. And uh, that's my tip for, for like songwriting is just get a, it doesn't have to rhyme. Just get a piece of paper, write what you're feeling. Try to explain into words as best as you can how you're feeling and sometimes it might not even make sense but I respect vulnerability more than I respect lazy songwriting and uh just yeah effortless songwriting so I appreciate that a lot more and I know you will too once you give it a try so yeah long but that's my tip okay next question is another one by Bell this said, do you feel the education you received helped you sen- help you helped uh, helped keep you centered and grounded? Um, for those of you who don't know, I graduated from a private school here in Hoover, Alabama called Heritage Christian Academy. And I would say during my years there, I didn't really like it. I wanted to, you know, go to public school like everybody else and they were really strict uniforms and hair and stuff and I just wasn't about that and it really it was tough but then during beginning of my senior junior year junior year going into senior year I started to really embrace my uh differentiality I think that's the word and um yeah I just started being proud of who I am and proud that I wasn't dressing like everybody else not proud in a sense of proud but you know being okay with being different and not thinking I'm weird or anything just because I don't want to dress like these people and I did for a while I did try to fit in but once I started to get comfortable in my own skin I was like you know what I can wear what I want to wear like I don't have to confine to the norm and so as of right now the person I am today I'm very grateful that my mom uh, made me go to a private school because I really feel like that's why I'm so strong in my faith and yeah like like you said, centered and grounded in, in my faith and what I believe in who I'm supposed to be. So I'm very, very grateful for that. All right. The next question is by Megan Dixon. And she said, who's your all time favorite musician to see perform live? Oh man, this is a tough one. Um, I would say I'm, I'm all over the place. Like I love all genres except, you know, the new modern country. And I would say like hardcore genre, like getting down like the craziest shows I've seen is Code Orange and if you don't know who they are they're brutal they're amazing Code Orange and um, Suicide Boys man Suicide Boys throw the craziest shows and um, I guess in the folk slash medicine community I reggae I, I love Mike Love Mike Love is the most talented musician I've ever seen live and the most humble guy I've ever met and been honored to meet him a bunch and play at the same festivals as him and he's just amazing man just a all-around good-hearted dude and Trevor Hall of course just the he brings the feels and yeah man I'm trying to think um an EDM like Liquid Stranger Liquid Stranger was insane uh Champagne Drip um Excision of course man those yeah man it's it I guess it just depends on what genre (laughs) this is from my baby she asked if you could have one superpower what would it be oh man being able to talk to animals I feel like that would be amazing I could know what uh, my cat thinks about me I could know when I'm annoying him and vice versa just be able to talk to I guess whenever I play music outside in nature I always usually get birds that pop up and they'll be like singing or humming along with me so I guess I'm kind of like a a bird whisperer when it comes to music and nature I'm totally kidding but no that really happens a lot of the times but yeah I think talking to animals would be amazing get to see their different sides of how they view things you know what I mean but yeah brother Rob tuning asked if you could play on stage with anyone in the world, alive or dead, who would it be? Oh man, this is a tough one. Um, I would have to say the Grateful Dead, of course. Like, 
just going back and watching the old videos of them. I, I sadly, I haven't seen Dead and Company yet, but just going back and watching all the Grateful Dead uh, tour videos, man, they just, they just rocked out and had a killer time at every show, just having fun. And I feel like that's what music is about. You know, it's, it's about sharing that peace and love through music and they are a perfect example of that. I, they would be amazing to play with. So yeah, I would have to say the Grateful Dead. Good questions, guys. I, I love this. All right. Next question is from the homie Jesse Heflin. And he asks, what is the most profound spiritual experience or lessons that still sticks with you day to day? Man, I would have to say uh, the day I gave my life to Jesus. And I was skating. You know, I'd grown up in the church my whole life. But, you know, I felt just swallowed by it, you know church every Sunday wear your button up and stuff like that and I feel like as most kids do you know it just gets in sort of a routine and you're not really going for the right reasons it's just because your parents are making you go and I was in that I was in that state and I was skating I used to I used to be a sponsored rollerblader so I would skate so much and um, I was trying to do this flip one day and I over rotated and I'll try I think I have the clip I'll show it right here And yeah, as you can see, I over rotated and I smacked the the living crap out of my head. And the funny thing is, though, like, as you can see, I went up and I got it and I landed it. So I landed it like two more tries after I hit my head. And then right after I landed it, I couldn't remember my name. I couldn't remember my friends. I couldn't remember what day it was. I couldn't remember my birthday. And it was terrible. I was so scared. And the last thing I remember, I blacked out. They took me to the emergency room. I remember waking up with them rolling me back. And my sis, I could see my sister crying and my family crying as they were walking with me. And then I just blacked out. And then the one thing I remember, and it still gives me chills every time, is when I was blacked out, like I saw Jesus holding out his hand. And he was saying, don't worry, you'll be okay. I got you. And man, I woke up, I told my family, we all started crying. And that's when I really rededicated my life to Jesus and really started to pursue the path that I'm on and try to do everything for him and his glory. And I would say that's one of the most beautiful, best decision of my entire, my entire life. And I can say that whole, wholeheartedly. So thank you. Thank you for the question, Jesse. All right. So this is, um, this is kind of like a, a three-part question, I guess you could say. It's from uh, Angelique, and it's from her, from her daughters. So um, Meadow asked, what else are you going to be as you keep growing up? Hmm. Man, I guess whatever God wants me to be, whatever, yeah, whatever he has in store, I would love to keep pursuing music but I don't want to expect, I don't ever want to expect anything. I just want to, I want to keep doing what I'm doing. And if God changes my path into another path, then, you know, I'll, I'll be obedient and I'll accept it. And cause I know he's never, he's never going to steer me wrong. And I'm excited to see what the, always excited to see what the future holds, whether it stays the same with music or it branches into something else. So Okay, Hannah and Hannah Ray asked, how old were you when you started singing and how do you do it in front of others now and not be shy? Hmm. This one was a tough one. Um, so when I was around, like I said in the beginning of the video, when I was around your age, uh, which is 10, I, I did my talent show and that was really nerve wracking. And that was the first time I've ever sang in front of a crowd, but I did it. And the reason I did it is I wanted to take a chance because the younger you start and the more you sing in front of your family, your friends, the more easier it becomes as you get older. And I really feel that's what got me into the doorway of being able to do that. Because nowadays on stage, I, I feel at home. Like I, be my, I can be myself and if I mess up, it's okay because the people I'm, I'm playing for, most of them will understand that, you know, we're human. He made a mistake like that. That's cool. And that's why I'm not afraid to make mistakes. And I usually don't make mistakes 
on stage because I'm so I'm so comfortable and trusting of the people I'm playing for and all you all of you beautiful people that really got me and so I guess what I would say is just start singing as much as you can even if it's in the shower even if it's into the mirror into yourself because your mind will think there's a person in there because you're looking at your reflection and sing in front of your family sing in front of your friends just really get out there and start trying to trying to use your voice as much as you can and that's the best advice I can give awesome questions you guys all right all right so Shannon Davis asked me cool last name by the way did any certain artist or artist lead you to pursue your dream of music if so who um I would definitely say for sure um I've always been interested in music but I would say like guitar wise when I heard uh, Trevor Hall's Chapter of the Forest album, that's still one of my most favorite albums of all to date. If you haven't heard it, please do yourself a favor and go check it out. But hearing all the beautiful, beautiful guitar on that, I was like, I can do this. I want to, I've talked about it for so long, I want to do this now. So that's what really encouraged me to get a guitar and start, you know, writing down what I'm feeling. Start, start speaking words even if they don't make sense to me right now i know they'll make sense in the future of why god is making me write them right now so i would say trevor hall probably had the pre probably had the most impact on me that's that's the big bro okay so my homie caleb quillman asked what is your favorite suicide boys song Whew, man that's a tough one um i've been vibing a little bit with their new stuff that's come out li lately not too much um, I would say definitely the oldies. I love a bunch of Suicide Boys oldies like, uh, let's see, Antarctica. I love Antarctica. I don't know what it's called, but it's, I got that eight got and that Glock on my side. It's really hanging out the window screaming, who wanna die? That one, I forgot the name of it in Paris, of course, typical one, but yeah, man, I love, I love Suicide Boys. I can't wait to see them again. Winding down here, so... Next question is from the homie Dylan Sage. There's actually two questions. Um, the first one is, if you could ask a frog anything and get an answer, what would it be? Hmm. <laughs> I've never thought about this. Probably be how was the kiss. Probably be how was the kiss. Nice. The next question is, what's the, the best, most beautiful thing you've seen traveling so far? Oh man, this is a tough one again. Uh, but as if you guys didn't know, I just got back from tour. I, me and my beautiful fiance, we toured the whole, the whole U.S. Hit almost every state. Um, I was on tour, doing house shows, festivals, venues, all that stuff, and it was it was a beautiful time. Um, I would definitely say probably Hawaii, in in Maui. It was such a beautiful, powerful, powerful state out there, and um, that's where I proposed to Brianna. So it held a special place in my heart, but either Maui or Venice and Santa Cruz area. So much love out there and, and homies out there. I'm so thankful for everybody I met on the road. It was a dream and I can't wait to do it again. So, all right, winding down here. So the next question is from Miranda Lynn 93 on Instagram. She asks, what's your religion and who inspired you to make music? Um, so for the first, the first question, first question what my religion is um i guess if you had to put it into a category it would be christianity but for me i don't really like to put it in a box or categorize it like that because um i don't see it i don't really view it as a religion i view it as a friendship i view it as a i view it as a relationship with jesus and god and so whatever you want to call that you can call that i just i look at it as you know God the Father, God the God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are I I have no words. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um and who inspired me to make music? I would say it's a it was a, definitely a bunch of people. Um definitely uh Nako in the beginning, of course. That's kind of what uh led me into all meet all of you beautiful people, the beautiful medicine group people. Um Trevor Hall um, Mike Love, Sublime, Grateful Dead, um, yeah, so many, so many beautiful people, man, which I'm forever grateful for. Last question here. So the last question I got is 
from Spoken Tuck 317 and this is from Instagram. And he asked, what's your deepest desire, brada? Hmm, my deepest desire. Man, these are these are really good questions and making me think. Uh I guess if I if I had to choose, man, I wish I didn't really have any desires. I wish it could be more of a sense of um a sense of freeness you know what I mean like being able to you know just be here and be very happy with where I'm at and I know those are very two different things but if you think about it as humans you know we always have some things that we want some more than others and I guess one of my deepest desires is you know for everybody to love each other and feel that love of Jesus and you know just be there for one another and peace and you know all the hippie shit all that stuff and you know to to live a healthy healthy life with uh brianna and have beautiful kids and yeah man just make the most of i make the most of myself that i can to be here to help serve and feed people and as well for you too watching and everybody out there to make the best of while you're here make an impact and love people and help people and serve people and yeah i guess that's my deepest desire yours so yeah all right you guys so thank you so much for all of you who submitted questions and if you want to be a part of the next q a all you got to do is just follow me on instagram and uh friend me on facebook and yeah i'll do another one of these really soon and you can ask me any questions that you have and I'll be happy to to answer them so once again thank you guys so much for a thousand we're almost at 1.1k as of right now and I couldn't thank you guys enough I love you guys please hit the subscribe button hit the like button comment let me know what you think and I'll see you guys in the next video love you guys peace